hope I'm audible and visible. Let me just check if my audio video is all fine. And welcome to this PYQ session in dermatology. Just give me a second. <clears throat> okay. So welcome all of you in the session of dermatology today. I will be discussing all the important PYQs because PYQ is something which gives you an idea that what exactly can be asked in your upcoming exam. What are the topic important? And at least all the students targeting their respective exams should know their PYQs. Okay. So let us start with the today's first, uh, today's topic. And the first question is, before going to the first question, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Cheshta Agarwal, your need PG educator on Unacademy. On an academy, we are having an offer for two to three days till 31st and that is unlock 20. We are giving you 15 plus 20 percent discount. So we are giving you an additional discount and you might need a code for this. The code is Cheshta10. So if you take a six month subscription, the offer price is 15,000 rupees. So you are saving around 7,200 rupees. The new batches which are starting right now is NEED PG Integrated Systemized Batch where the dual educator approach will be given. NEED PG 2022 Integrated Batch, it includes the Module 1 which is from August to October. You will get an Integrated Clinical Revision, MCQ Long Form Case Discussions, Dual Educator Classes, In-Class Depth Solving by the Top Educators, etc. etc. So I would be requesting all my students to kindly go ahead and get your subscription today. You can use the referral code CHESHTARS10 for the same. Please use the referral code CHESHTARS10 for the same. We have a question bank 2.0 which is coming soon. I would be requesting all of you to please kindly go ahead and get your subscription. You can go with an Unacademy Lite subscription if you want to get the subscriptions. My INICT batch for dermatology, Rana, uh, there is already an INICT batch going on for dermatology. Uh, the new batches, I'm not very much sure right now, any new batch is about to start. You can just uh, wait and just follow me on the app. Whenever I'll get the information of the new batch, I'll make sure that I'll forward this to you. So let's start with the first question. Abhijit, LMS, Rana, Manali, Akhila. This was a recent question. The question was a female student presented with urticaria following intake of a seafood. She wants a non sedating drug since this is her exam time. Which of the following would be the preferred anti stomach for this patient's condition? So today's class is a PYQ series and I'll try my best to at least give you a PYQ of the recent exams from dermatology. Very nice. Now urticaria is a condition where there is accumulation. What is urticaria? It's a condition where you have accumulation of mast cell in the skin. What is urticaria? It is accumulation of the mast cell in the skin. We have antihistaminics which is given for these patients. You have to give antihistaminics to take care of these urticaria lesions. You have to give antihistaminics to take care of these urticaria lesions. Now, antihistaminics, they are grouped into two. The one is generation one and second is generation two. Both has an equal anti-itching effect, but the sedation effect is too much in generation one. And the question clearly mentioned that you want to give some antihistaminics where the sedation potential is less. So, you will prefer a second generation antihistaminic and only one example is given that is Fexofenadin. Can anybody tell me any other second generation antihistaminics? What are the names? One is Fexofenadin. Please remember Ceterizin, Levocetrizin, then Loratidin and Desloratidin. They all are the second generation antihistaminic including fexofenadine. Okay, including fexofenadine. Moving to the next question. Please tell me the answer of this question. What would be the diagnosis of this image? Yeah. 
welcome all of you welcome in this session what could be the diagnosis of this image alopecia areata telogen effluvium trichotillomania or anagen effluvium what could be the diagnosis for this image alopecia areata telogen effluvium trichotillomania or anagen effluvium very nice you can see a smooth patch if you notice this there is a smooth circular patch where there is complete loss of hair if you notice that the underlying skin is non erythematous non scaly so if you see anything like this please remember this is alopecia areata in tinea capitis which is fungal infection of the scalp another important cause of hair loss in children you will see redness scaling the smooth skin is not there in the patients of fungal infection but here it is smooth skin so it is alopecia areata clear very nice isha kumbhak rana ashish jayesh the treatment of alopecia areata is intralesional steroids intralesional steroids a farmer or gardener by occupation presented with the following lesion what is the diagnosis a farmer or gardener by occupation presented with the following lesions what is the diagnosis mycetoma chromoblastomycosis sporotrichosis or pheohyphomycosis pheohyphomycosis very nice combat vishranti now this is a question which you got i think in 2021 fmg paper if you look at this image you can see three things the first thing is you see that there is tumification tumor or tumification second is there is sinuses which are discharging and third is you can see some grains or crystal coming out of it a very classical triad a very classical triad of tumification grain and sinus the answer is option number 1 mycetoma please remember this is not chromoblastomycosis the answer should be option number 1 shweta it is not the occupation of the patient which decide whether it is mycetoma or chromoblastomycosis it is the clinical presentation chromoblastomycosis is like a wart a warty growth on the exposed part but here you can clearly see that it is not a warty growth it is a tumorous swelling which is present on the foot very classical of mycetoma please remember we have two types of mycetoma one is eumycotic mycetoma and another is actinomycotic eumycotic mycetoma is a fungal mycetoma fungal mycetoma while actinomycetoma is a bacterial mycetoma in both of them you will see tumor in both of them you will see sinuses and grains the difference is u mycetoma is very slow growing and more deforming while actinomycetoma is fast growing and less deforming the color of grain in u mycetoma is black while actinomycetoma the color of grain is reddish brown clear yeah. so please remember this is a patient with mycetoma yes manali you are right in chromoblastomycosis they will write the word verrucous growth or warty growth or cauliflower like growth so this cannot be a patient of chromoblastomycosis okay let's move to the next question i hope everybody is clear can i get a thumbs up from all of you if this point is or this question is clear if this question is clear i want a quick thumbs up from all of you so look at this this is how mycetoma look like swelling tumefaction and grains while chromoblastomycosis is something like this 
chromoblastomycosis is something like this. You have a verrucous growth which is present on the surface. <clears throat> Sporotrichosis have a linear sort of presentation. You can see that there is a linear presentation in sporotrichosis. Linear presentation in the sporotrichosis. Next question. Next question. A 70 year old patient who develops the following lesions over the face since 2 years. What is the diagnosis? Basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, malignant melanoma, or keratoacanthoma? We had a very similar question in NEET PG 2022 also. Please remember the answer to this question is basal cell carcinoma. It's a patient with basal cell carcinoma. Whenever you get a nodulo ulcerative lesion, whenever you get a nodulo ulcerative lesion on the sun exposed areas, nodulo ulcerative lesion on the sun exposed area in an elderly individual, think about basal cell carcinoma. Yes, you're right. Basal cell carcinoma, because it's a very slowly growing tumor, it neither metastatizes through blood, it neither metastatizes through lymphatics. It's a very slowly growing ulcer. And that is why it is sometimes known as rodent ulcer. It disrupts all these things which comes in contact, all these structures which comes in contact with the ulcer, it gets destroyed. So please remember, this is a patient with, this is a patient with, Basal cell carcinoma. The patient with basal cell carcinoma. For treating basal cell carcinoma, you need to do surgery and we do microscopic Mo surgery where we remove sequentially the tumor cell so that we can preserve the maximum normal skin. A young lady with lacy lesions on the oral cavity, a proximal nail fold have extended onto the nail bed what is the likely diagnosis? What is the likely diagnosis? Nand Kumar, Yogesh, Utkarsh, Akhila, Med School, Rana, Sharon, very nice, Manali, D. Villiard, <clears throat> LMS. This is a very classical oral lacy pattern. And you are also right that the nail changes which is seen here is nail pterygium. The dorsal pterygium which is one of the characteristic feature of lichen planus. Please remember, in 60% of lichen planus patients, you develop oral lesions and in 10% of lichen planus patients, you develop nail changes. So, this is a very classical patient. Uh, Ma'am, nail bed questions. Uh, Shweta, the nail bed and the nail plate or nail matrix, that is with respect to psoriasis. That is not something which is given here. I'll, I'll give you that question. That is actually the INICT. Uh, question that's what I remember that is the INICT question okay clear eh? so this is a patient with lichen planus and a very classical oral reticular RLP identify the condition which is shown in the image condyloma acuminata Bowen's disease condyloma lata or hemorrhoides tenting is the feature of nail lichen planus you are right please remember Manali the pup tent sign which is the tenting of the nail. It is the thinning of the nail which is seen in the patients of lichen planus. And yes, it is a feature of nail LP. It is in fact considered to be the more common feature compared to that of pterygium. More common compared to that of pterygium. Identify the condition shown in the image. Identify the condition shown in the image. Very nice. Very nice, all of you. You can see a verrucous growth on the perianal skin. You can see a verrucous growth on the perianal skin. Look at this. Can you see these lesions? They are the verrucous growth in the perianal region. 
It's a very very classical feature of condyloma acuminata. Condyloma acuminata is another name for genital wart. And you all are right that the HPV strains causing genital wart is 6 and 11. It is 6 and 11. So it's an image based question. Nothing we need to know about that. Next. A patient with following lesions, what can be the diagnosis? A patient with the following lesions, what can be the diagnosis? Hypomelanosis of Eto, segmental vitiligo, nevus of Eto or Baker's nevus. A patient presenting with the following lesion, what is the diagnosis? Patient with the following lesions, what is the diagnosis? Patient presenting with the following lesion, what is the diagnosis? Hypomelanosis of Eto, vitiligo, nevus of Eto or Baker's nevus. Patient presenting with the following lesion diagnosis. Very nice. The correct answer of this question is segmental vitiligo. The correct answer of this question is segmental vitiligo. Now, if you look at this image, the vitiligenous pass is not causing crossing the midline. It is not crossing the midline. It is present only on a single dermatome. And this type of vitiligo which is present on a single dermatome is known as segmental vitiligo. Please remember it has a good prognosis compared to the other type of local vitiligos. It has a good prognosis compared to that of other type of vitiligo, segmental vitiligos. Next question. What is the correct answer? Very nice. LMS, Komal, Yashika, Ashish, Jayesh, Sharon. Also with an overhanging undermined edges in the neck region as shown the image below. What is the diagnosis? It's a characteristic image of tubercular lymph node secondarily infecting the skin which is known as scrofuloderma or tiber, TB lymph nodes. Scrofuloderma or TB lymph nodes. Scrofuloderma and TB lymph nodes. Clear everyone? So very classical scrofuloderma or TB lymph nodes. It's the most common variety in our children. While in adults, the most common variety is what? What? Lupus vulgaris. Which mineral deficiency can lead to following condition? Which mineral deficiency can lead to following conditions? Zinc, iron, calcium, vitamin A. If you notice, this is a peri-orificial lesion. If you notice, it's a periorificial lesion. So, which, which, what can be the commonest? What can be the commonest? Clear, everyone. So, which mineral deficiency can lead to following condition? The answer of this question is option number one, that is zinc deficiency. Which mineral deficiency can lead to following condition? The answer is zinc deficiency. What are the other options? Uh, iron, calcium, vitamin A, there is nothing much to explain here. Vitamin A deficiency will cause phrynoderma. Calcium deficiency as such will not cause any cutaneous lesions. Iron deficiency can cause spooning of the nail which is known as coelonychia. In zinc deficiency which is known as acrodermatitis which is known as acrodermatitis enteropathica. Zinc deficiency which is known as acrodermatitis enteropathica it has a very classical triad of that D A D. What is that? Diarrhea, alopecia, and periorificial dermatitis. So, these are the features which you see in the zinc deficiency patients. And also, please remember zinc is a metal which is carrier of vitamin A. So, if you have zinc deficiency 
you will see vitamin A deficiency because the vitamin A will not get distributed all over the body. So that is the very important thing. First line treatment for acne comedones is First line treatment for acne comedones is First line treatment for acne comedone is Topical steroids, topical antibiotic, benzoyl peroxide or topical retinoid. First line treatment for acne comedones. Topical steroids, topical antibiotic, benzoyl peroxide or topical retinoids. Very well done. The correct answer is topical retinoid. If you look at this, these lesions are the comedones. These lesions are the comedonal lesions. If you notice, there are comedone which is seen in these conditions. Whenever you have comedone, it means the obstruction to the follicular outflow. And for treating this follicular outflow obstructions, you will give a keratolytic drug. The only keratolytic drug which is present here is topical retinoid. And the two topical retinoids available with us is adapalin and retinoin. Adapalin and retinoin. These are the two topical retinoids which we will be using as a treatment modality for acne comedones. For acne comedones. Next questions. Identify the condition which is shown in the image, malignant melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma or nevus. Identify the condition which is shown in this image. The correct answer of this question is option number 1. I can see a lot of you with the correct answer. Now I want all of you to look at this. This is an elderly patient. You can see that this is not a young patient. She is an elderly patient. And there is a pigmented lesion on the face. Now, this could be nevus also, right? Why this is not a nevus? So, if you look at this pigmented lesion, first of all, the very important feature is that the color is not same. It is dark here, lighter here, or depigmented here, then little light pigment here. With an irregular border, it is not having any regular smooth borders. So, variegation in the color with irregular border, this indicates that you are dealing with malignant melanoma and very nice Manali, this is a case of lentigo maligna. This is a case of lentigo maligna. So, malignant melanoma which mainly present, the variant of malignant melanoma which mainly present in an elderly patient on the sun exposed skin is lentigo maligna. To identify this, we will see that there is variegation of the color, irregular border. In history, the patient will give you a history of sudden increase in the size or the change in consistency of the lesion. All of them points towards the diagnosis of malignant melanoma. Why not nevus anil? Because that's what I was trying to tell that nevus cells usually have uniform color. Which organism is responsible for causing erysipelas? 
which organism is responsible for causing erysipelas which organism is responsible for causing erysipelas so this is a sign which is very important this is a sign which is very very important can you tell me what sign is this very nice this is a very classical millionaires and if you look at this image it looks so fancy right but please remember here there is a little bit of effect of the uh, camera light so this pinkish appearance is not usually which you see through your naked eye you will see it as red but maybe because of some camera effect the skin is appearing pink but the one thing which you have to notice is you can clearly see that the inflammation of the cheek is extending onto the ear and that is what is known as million ear sign million ear sign which is a sign to differentiate cellulitis of the face from the cellulitis of the ear cellulitis of the face from cellulitis of the ear this is the sign so which organism is responsible for causing erysipelas the correct answer of this question is streptococcus it is more frequent compared to that of the cephalococcus manali please remember erysipelas is the inflammation or infection of the dermal part while cellulitis is the inflammation of subcutaneous tissue in erysipelas because the dermal part is getting affected you can get involvement of the ear also when the face is involved but in cellulitis the ear pinna is not involved because you do not have subcutaneous tissue in the ear pinna and that is how you can differentiate erysipelas from cellulitis erythrasma rana erythrasma is a completely different condition erythrasma it is a bacterial condition it's a bacterial infection erythrasma is a bacterial infection secondary to corine bacteria minutissimum and it has a very characteristic coral red appearance under the fluorescence so erythrasma is different and erysipelas is different they are two different entities two different entities erythrasma and erysipelas are two different entities okay yes very nice lms cutaneous horns are shown in the image is associated with which of the following skin cancers again requesting all of you if you are not uh, able to answer the pyq this is not a good sign because pyqs they are must for any exam inict neat fmg anybody who is interested please take an academy light subscription using the code cheshta10 if you take an academy light subscription you can get the access of all the mcqs and currently we are going on with 15 plus 20% of discount so please utilize this more the mcqs you will solve more will be your concept i don't want anybody to read theory again and again but try to do as many mcqs as possible trust me that will actually improve your theory also now this is a patient with cutaneous horn and please remember if you do not remove the cutaneous horn it will convert into squamous cell carcinoma it will convert into squamous cell carcinoma okay you have to take care of these cutaneous horns because they are pre malignant and can get convert into squamous cell carcinoma this we have done okay the next question the patient suffering from ulcerative colitis presented with the ulcer on the anterior leg as shown in the image what is the diagnosis very nice anil kartik sham yogesh rana vijaya hilal sachin patient suffering from ulcerative colitis presents with ulcer on the anterior leg so one clue is a patient with inflammatory bowel disease a patient with inflammatory bowel disease presenting with a rapidly progressing painful ulcer this is a feature of pyoderma gangrenosum and it is an example of neutro philic dermatosis in ibd patients the neutrophil starts accumulating inside the skin making it hypersensitive these hypersensitive skins because of inflammation start becoming ulcerative these ulcers do not requires any antibiotic or sterile conditions for its treatment can you tell me how to treat a patient or an ulcer of ulcerative colitis or pyoderma gangrenosum you need to give you need to give steroids or depsol okay so you need to give steroids or depsol 
in the patients of pyoderma gangrenosum. A uh, med school, please remember that pyoderma gangrenosum, it has multiple etiologies. It can be secondary to an infection, it can be secondary to inflammatory bowel disorder or it can be secondary to drugs. So the first thing is you have to look for the other causes of pyoderma also. First try to differentiate all those causes and try to treat them accordingly. The next question is on your computer screen. The next question is on your computer screen. The common complication associated with the following condition. Post streptococcal glomerulonephritis is. I hope I am audible and visible to everyone. Very nice. Hilal, Kajal, Siddhi, Sham, Kartik, Vijaya, Shubhajit. This is a very classical honey colored crust of non bullous impetigo. Very nice. It's a very classical honey colored crust. It's a very classical honey colored crust of non bullous impetigo. And please remember the M49 strains of Streptococcus, which is the common cause of non bullous impetigo. It is known to cause a side effect, which is known as post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The strain of M49 of Streptococcus is known to cause, it is known to cause a classical ulcers. So Jayesh, Uma, Nandakumar, Is this point clear to all of you? The common complications associated with following condition. Post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, and kephalitis or pneumonitis. The answer to this question is option number one. A tourist guide in Mount Everest after one of his trips developed blisters on the feet which is not useful for his treatment. Hyperbaric oxygen, aspirin, phenylephrine or pentoxyphylin. Which of the following is not useful for his treatment? Which of the following is not useful for his treatment? A tourist guide in Mount Everest after one of his trip developed blisters. Now, at a very hilly places, what happens when you go? There is vasoconstriction. And whenever there is vasoconstriction, the part which is supplied by that vessel, distal to the vasoconstriction, it gets compromised. There is no blood supply, there is no oxygen supply, and this will give rise to pain and blistering formation. So, the same has happened here. This is a patient of chill blame. When he went to the Mount Everest, because of extreme cold environment, the vasoconstriction occurred. For treating this, we need to give something which improves the blood supply to the distal part. It can be hyperbaric oxygen, aspirin which is given to prevent any further obstruction and pentoxyphalin which is a vasodilator. There is no role of phenylephrine because it is a vasoconstricting drug and in fact, this will precipitate the patient's condition even more. So you will not give pentoxy, uh, you will not give phenyl effort to these individuals. So a patient guide in Mount Everest after one of his trips developed blisters on the feet, which is not useful for his treatment. The answer is option number three. Patient presents with history of severe sunburn after only a few minutes in the sun. Frackling in the sun exposed areas, dry skin, changes in skin pigmentation, what is the diagnosis? This is a patient with very nice. Now, what happens when you are exposed to sun? Normally also, 
Sun is known to cause some damage to the skin. Sun causes damage to the skin. Now what happens? In our body to protect ourselves from the sun, we have some mechanisms which are which are keep on working, they are keep on protecting our skin. One of such mechanism is muc the DNA repair, the DNA repair mechanism. So whatever damage have occurred second to the sun, it get automatically repaired by DNA repair mechanism. This is present in all of us normally. In few individuals, secondary to some gene defects, these mechanism becomes defective. And obviously, if these mechanisms become defective, our body will not be able to fight against the sun. Whatever damage is occurring secondary to the UV radiation, it will keep on accumulating in our cells. And ultimately, it will give rise to the changes like freckling of the skin, malignancies of the skin, photosensitivity, etc. One of the examples of DNA repair defect mechanisms is zero derma pigmentosa. It is seen with freckling of the face and other associated features like photosensitivity, increased, increased skin cancers. Can you tell me, can you tell me any other DNA repair defect mechanism? Uh, iatrogenic, this is not a mismatch repair. This is a nucleotide excision repair defect. It is not a mis mismatch. It is nucleotide excision repair defect. The other DNA repair defect Diseases are Bloom syndrome, cocaine syndrome, ataxia telangiectasia, trichothiodystrophy. So these are some of the examples of other DNA repair defect syndromes. Okay. Now this is actually getting a lot of uh, hype nowadays. The child with sores in the mouth and the rash on the hand and feet as shown in the image below. What is the causative organism for it? Coxsackie A16, pox virus, herpes virus or human papilloma virus. Very nice. The child with soreness in the mouth, a rash in the hand and the feet. This is a patient with hand, foot and mouth disease. This is a child with hand, foot and mouth disease. So please remember the correct answer of this question is Coxsackie A16. The correct answer is Coxsackie A16. So, hand, foot and mouth disease or Coxsackie A16 is the correct answer. In these individuals, you develop angulated vesicles. The vesicles are not round like this. They are like this. Angulated. They are angulated. Can you see? They are not round. They are angulated. They are not round. They are angulated. So, angulated vesicles when they are present on palm, foot, mouth and even on the buttock. Buttock is also one of the very common sites. You have to always look for the involvement of buttocks in the patients of hand, foot and mouth disease. Next question. Uh, in chill plain questions, what will be the answer if the warfarin is given in place of phenylephrine? Okay. So, please remember LMS, anything which causes vasoconstriction, you should avoid giving that. Okay. So, anything which causes vasoconstriction, you have to avoid. The one which is improving the flow, you have to give that. Child with fever, pleomorphic rash as shown in the image, very classical. Can you tell me what is this appearance called as? Very classical image based question. This appearance is known as dew drop on rose petal. Dew drop on rose petal appearance. Dew drop on rose petal appearance. Dew drop on the rose petal appearance and it's a very classical rash of chicken pox. Yes, you are right. Pleomorphic is a word or is a thing which is given in the question, which is very, very classical of chickenpox. In smallpox, the lesions are monomorphic. The lesions are monomorphic in smallpox. The lesions are monomorphic in smallpox. The time of reading the patch test for allergic contact dermatitis according to International Contact Dermatitis Research Group is 24 and 48 hours, 48 and 72, 48 and 96, 24 and 36 hours.
the time of reading of a patch test according to international contact dermatitis research group is the time of reading the patch test for allergic contact dermatitis according to international contact dermatitis research group now here the answer is number 3 please remember it is 48 hours and 96 hours that is we remove the patch on day 2 and we read the patch on day 4 not day 3 we do it on day 4 so 48 and 96 hours are the correct answers so everybody those who are marking option number 2 that is not correct it is option number 3 it is option number 3 the next question is on your computer screen What is the answer here? The patient with fever, severe joint pain comes to you. She also develops pigmentation of the nose. What is the likely diagnosis? What is the likely diagnosis? melasma chick sign sle or rosacea the patient with fever severe joint pain comes to you she also develop pigmentation of nose what the likely diagnosis of this patient is melasma chick sign sle or rosacea melasma chick sign sle or rosacea please remember the correct answer of this question is chick sign it's a very classical feature of chikungunya fever so you 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 all must be aware that there was a time when there is sudden increase in the chikungunya cases i think it was like few years back it was observed that after 2 to 3 weeks of chikungunya fever the patients were developing a very characteristic pigmentation on the centrofacial skin centrofacial means on the nose upper lip cheek so whenever these individuals are developing or whenever post chikungunya If a patient develops centrofacial resistant pigmentation, it is known as chick sign. This is not melasma. See the melasma, the site is cheek or mandibular area or the bridge of the nose. It is not the tip of the nose, which is the site for the melasma. So that is how you differentiate them. Plus, obviously, in melasma, you will not get any history of joint pain, fever preceding the onset of these type of pigmentary lesions. So there are some clues which will help you actually identify the diagnosis. which of the following will show canker redux which of the following will show canker redux if anybody have attended my plus class or one of my uh, theory classes they might be knowing a canker redux i would be requesting all of you to please join an academy you can use my code the code is cheshta10 c h e s t a 10 you can take shorter subscriptions of 4 months 6 months you can take an academy light subscription which is the mcq access we are giving 15 plus 20% so this is a excessive discount if you use this code we are giving this discount and the offer is only valid till august 31st so you have only 2 days left go ahead and get your subscription please remember canker redux is a feature of early relapsing syphilis what is canker redux it is reappearing primary canker reappearing primary canker what is the normal course of syphilis anyone how will the syphilis patients progress normally you will have a primary syphilis which presents with a hard canker the primary syphilis after some time it will go into the secondary stage or secondary syphilis where the disease involves all over the body hematogenous spread after secondary there is a stage where the cutaneous lesions are not seen and after latent stage the patient goes into an extreme stage of tertiary stage where the cardiovascular system central nervous system as well as the skin is involved in few cases instead of going to tertiary the latent syphilis patients started developing primary canker again and that stage is known as early relapsing syphilis when in the primary in the latent stage there is sudden reappearance of primary canker again that is known as canker redux and this type of syphilis is known as relapsing syphilis this type of syphilis is known as relapsing syphilis 
Kobner's phenomena is seen in all except. So we had a question. I think recently, I'm not very much sure. I think FMG paper had a question on Kobner's phenomena. Uh, iatrogenic doctor remembered that syphilis, you will never see any symptom. They are asymptomatic lesions. So no pain, no itching. Only when you press these lesions little deeper, you get tenderness, but there is no pain. Only tenderness is seen and that too, it is deep dermal tenderness. Very nice. I think everybody knows uh, what is the Kobner's phenomena. When the trauma induces the pathogenesis, it is Kobner's phenomena. You see it in psoriasis, vitiligo and lichen planus. They all are the examples of true Kobner's. They all are the example of true Kobner's phenomena. They all are the example of true Kobner's phenomena. Can you tell me what is pseudo Kobner's? What is pseudo Kobner's? Anybody here can tell me what is pseudo Kobner's phenomena? In which condition you see pseudo Kobner's phenomena? Anybody can tell me in which condition you will see pseudo Kobner's phenomena? In which condition you see pseudo Kobner's phenomena? Very well done all of you. Please remember pseudo Kobner's phenomena occurs in infective condition due to auto inoculation. So you see it in molluscum contagiosum, HPV that is viral warts. These are some of the conditions where you see pseudo Kobner's phenomena. Patient presenting with following lesions on the trunk, what is the diagnosis? The patient presenting with the following lesion, what is the diagnosis? Erythrodermic, pustular, inverse and gutted. They are all psoriasis. I hope you can observe that. They are all psoriasis. Erythrodermic psoriasis, pustular psoriasis, inverse psoriasis or gutted psoriasis. So, patient presented with the following lesions on the trunk. The diagnosis is erythrodermic, pustular, inverse and gutted. Erythrodermic, pustular, inverse or guttate. A patient with the following lesions on the trunk. What is the diagnosis? Very nice. Shrishan, Akhila, LMS, Ranu, Shavan. Very nice all of you. Patient presented with the following lesions on the trunk. The diagnosis is guttate psoriasis. Now, guttate psoriasis is a variety of psoriasis where you see small guttate or coin shaped or rain drop like lesions. As it, 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 it appears as if there is rain drops on the skin. So, rain drop like lesions are present. Not pigmentation. I am not talking about rain drop pigmentation. There is rain drop papules and plaque. You will see the lesions mainly on the trunk compared to the extremities. They are mainly on the trunk compared to that of extremities. Mainly on the trunk compared to that of extremities. Okay. So, please remember coin shaped lesions, raindrop like trunk more frequently than the extremities. And yes, you are right, LMS, that there should be an history, but there is nothing given. Even though if there is nothing given, this is a very classical image. You don't need anything. It's a classical lesion of guttate psoriasis. Guttate psoriasis is more common in children, but it doesn't mean that you cannot develop guttate in adult. It is more common in children. That is also true. But it is not that it will never occur in an adult patient. Okay. Erythroderma means whole body is red. Exfoliation is occurring. Pustula means you have pus filled lesions. And inverse means the lesions are occurring on the inverse areas. Okay. Identify the given condition. Identify the given condition. Mycetoma, chromoplastomycosis, tuberculosis, verruca cutis. A very similar question we have done few minutes back. Only the difference is that the image is changed. The only difference is the image is changed. This is an FMG question. I am not very much sure that the same image was there, but yes, the image FMG back to back two times we are getting the questions from mycetoma. Two years back to back questions from subcutaneous fungus. 
Neurofibromatosis type 1 is a hereditary condition associated with cafe ole spots on the skin. Which pattern of inheritance is seen in this condition? Which pattern of inheritance? Yes, you are right, Pralag. Few topics are favorite for NB examinations. One is infectious disorder. Second is genodermatosis also. So, neurofibromatosis type 1 is a hereditary condition associated with cafe ole spots on the skin. Which pattern of inheritance is seen in this condition? Akila, Shavan, Shrishan, Dr. Utkash. This is a patient with type 1 neurofibromatosis which is an autosomal dominant condition. It is chromosome number 17 while neurofibromatosis 2 is chromosome number 22. So that is the difference. So chromosome number 17 and chromosome number 22 is the correct answer. Yeah. What is the correct answer? I, I I think I missed writing option number 4. But anyways, you can answer this question. The patient with scaly skin and on histopathology, neutrophils are present. This is an FMG question. I think this was FMG uh, 2022 that I am not sure. 2022 year 21. Very nice. Why you are writing it as uh, as uh, option number 2? You will not get neutrophils in pemphigus group. In psoriasis, we see collection of neutrophils in the stratum corneum. And please remember, that is the pathognomic histopathological feature which is known as micro. Monro abscess. It's a pathological. Uh, it's a pathological, pathognomic feature which is seen in the patients of psoriasis. Female with sweet complaints of vaginal discharge, lower abdominal pain, tenderness. Which color kit you will prescribe her? Which color kit you will prescribe her? Which color kit you will prescribe in this patient? Which color kit you will prescribe in this patient? Very well done all of you. Very nice. A 25 year old male with chief complaints of vaginal discharge, lower abdominal pain, tenderness. The color kit which you have to prescribe her is option number 3. Lower abdominal pain and tenderness. It means this patient is a patient of pelvic inflammatory disease. And for PID, you give kit number 3. Kit number 1, grey colour is for urethral discharge. Kit number 2 is for herpetic genital ulcer. For herpetic genital ulcer. And kit number 4 is for inguinal bubo. Kit number 4 is for inguinal bubo. Uh, Pralat. Yes, I have taken a class on Unacademy for the easy ways. So you can join Unacademy using my code. And you can join the class on mnemonics to remember the STD kits. You can use this code to join the class on mnemonics of STD kit. I have already taken a session on the ways and the easy methods to diagnose a patient of STD kit. Okay. So thank you all of you. I hope this session was beneficial for everyone. We had a lot of MCQs. I'll try to take a very similar session uh, soon, maybe by tomorrow. So I want all of you to please be with me. Lastly, I just want to show this offer again that now you can get a 15 plus 20 percent additional discount when you get a NEED PG plus subscription. As well as you get a total 20% on Iconic subscription which give you an access to both Unacademy and Pep Ladder. Whenever you get a subscription, they will ask you for a code. 
and the code which you have to put is C H E S T A ten. Whenever they ask you for a code, just put this C H E S T A ten. Okay. So thank you all of you. Good day.